Hello everybody, Frankie Day here from Frankie Day Models. Okay fellas, it was a beautiful windy Tuesday, overcast today a little bit. Beautiful day in my, my eyes. I got a video for you, I'm starting to build here. I'm doing two at once right now. And uh, I'll probably have that uh, hell diver done. If I had the SP2C hell diver I get from Freddy. And uh, oh, he's speaking about Freddy, I was on Facebook a while ago fellas. He's in sick bay in a hospital, probably VA somewhere. And uh, I don't know. He has some kind of an IV in his in his hand, and I don't know what happened. I hope he's okay. I'm I'm, a little, I'm getting a little worried about him, and I uh, hope he's well. Hang in there, Freddie. You'll be all right, buddy. Anyway, uh, he, Freddie gave me this SP2C Hell Diver right over here. You guys probably seen it already. I gotta finish it up. It's right here. I gotta paint the. Uh, the red on the flap die brakes on there. I got a lot of work doing this thing. So this will be 1942. It's the first release before the, it's the first uh, the first version of it before it went to SP2C4 fives. So that's the uh, early one. And uh, so I got that going. I'm getting pretty well caught up with all these builds I got behind. And I got one build that I started probably about eight nine years ago that needs to be done. And we'll get to that after we get to this here. Okay, I went to Hobbytown, USA, and I bought ICM, SMS Markgraf. It's a uh, Koenig class World War I dreadnought. And uh, this thing is very difficult in a way. There are some fit issues with the kids. ICM makes it. I think this kid's Ukraine or Russian. I bet you the money it probably is. Probably an ex Zavelda kid or something, and the ICM got their hands on it. I don't know. I can't keep up with these manufacturers. All I know is that any old molds going around, they buy these molds out and put their name on it. So, anyway, uh, it's a nice kit in general. I'm doing the sub assemblies on it. And we'll take the camera, we'll take a look at it, and let's talk him face to face. Okay, get this done. Mouse out of the way. I don't want to gear drift. This here is about uh, it's about 20 inches long. No, about 20 inches long. A typical dreadnought of World War One. This is part of the Kaiser's fleet that was scuttled at Scapa Flow during the end of Armistice Day. And uh, the 127 these vessels went down. They're actually excellent good dive sites. I've been working on the sub assemblies. There's a lot of parts to this here. They've got to be primed. I still got more parts to put on this sub assembly here. I've got all the turrets. I got these um, little food containers right here. I got all these sub assemblies for this here ship. I got my turrets on here. This goes to the hell diver. So I got that separate and I got all my casement guns in here. And I got my 14 inch turrets on there. And the right here is. Uh... Yeah, that's why I got my guns right there. They got to be primed to paint it. I already got the hull painted with red, red oxide. So I'm going to go ahead and mass off this hull and start airbrushing it with the ocean gray. It's a humbrol. I was very, very fortunate. I got the last last uh, 10 of humbrol at Hobbytown, USA. It's a uh, satin uh, number 127 humbrol. It's ocean gray. That's a color this bad boy's in. So I'm going to put a wash on it and, and uh, do a little weathering on it. Keep, a he keep the heavy weathering on it because these things were very, very weathered. And very dirty, 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 dirty. And I'm not going to make it too dirty, dirty. I'll keep the we the, the weathering pretty good, like it's been weathered for a while. But no overall perspective, the beautiful looking dreadnought. Actually, this was designed off the HMS dreadnought that the Kaiser's fleet, when they made these these Kooning class battleships, and they had other classes too as well during uh, uh, the Battle of Jutman. And uh, so during Armistice Day, these ships were. Uh, they surrendered. They all, they all uh, went to the Anchorage. The English the Anchorage at the time was Scott Flow. It was their Pearl Harbor compared to what we had. And uh, so all the, the Kaiser's fleet was there. It was really shot. It was really a sight to behold, they say. Uh, people out there that seen it, they, 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 they say they, all they've seen is miles and miles of ships, warships coming into Scott Flow. And uh, they were uh, a, a lot of, a lot, a lot of them there. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, they heard explosions going off on them. 
they thought they were firing rounds at them. I thought they were going to have ground bombard uh, bombardment. But what it was, those scuttling charges went out. And these things sunk in very, very shallow water, uh, say between uh, 40 meters and, uh, and, uh, and 100, 40 meters, 150 feet to 100 feet, somewhere around there. Uh, a lot of the people all over the world dive on these things. Uh, the Mark Graf right here, uh, she's turned upside down, her hull's upside down, so all the suit structures all squished because of the gravity of the ship as she hit the seabed is all smashed up. And the barbettes is still in place. The oven came off. And um, in, overall, in overall perspective, it's modeled by ICM. It's a, I would not recommend novices on here because these parts are so fragile. And uh, the explanation of the instructions are garbled. It's kind of hard to understand the clarity of the parts where they go. You just got to use common sense. So I got to finish up the sub assemblies over here on this section, this part here. I got about four or five hours in each one of these sub assemblies here, so it takes time. So I'll get this thing down to the sub assembly. And uh, I'm going to start doing some painting. This thing's very fragile. You've got these outriggers stick up in these stacks. You gotta watch out for them bad boys, eh? They'll break easily. You gotta reinforce them with, uh, what I did, I drilled a hole through both sides of the stack here, and I made me some sprue. The kits was fragile, all bent and warped. I said, I'm not gonna use that. That's junk. So I can make a better one, stronger and better out of sprue. So I clipped a piece of sprue from the sprue trees in the kit and stretch it out and drill a hole one side of the stack where it was at. I kind of fish it through, made it one unit, and put some uh, a little drop of ACC on there to seize it up there. The decks are going to have to gloss the decks real well, let them dry 24 hours, and go back and put a wash on them. And it uh, should be pretty much in the tank right there for that. Okay, if that's much as far as I got. On this uh, one three fifty scale SMS Koenig, SMS Mark Graf, excuse me, fellas, and uh, got a lot more to go. Okay, this is the second battleship I'm doing right now. So the name of this video is called the Battleship Doubles. Here's one that needs no introduction. This is the Ravel USS Arizona. Believe it or not, fellas, this is the Lord's truth. This kit came out back in 1958. This thing has been running strong in production since 1958, and they're still making these things. And these were actually a very nice kit. The kit in general, when it was released, and this, it was actually for the 1930s refit. It wasn't uh, the configuration for 1940. To make it 1940, you got to do a lot of surgery on here. So I done on here, I, I cut out all the railings on here. All these railings cut off on this boat deck here. And I cut off all the railings on top of here. Now, Gary Breaker did about 20, 20, 20 or 30 videos. But he, 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 he's a, he's, that's the most best, best instructional video that there is of this kit that I know of. Uh, whatever, whatever there is in the whole world. And uh, I kind of miss, I miss Gary Brinker. I haven't heard nothing from him for a while. I hope he's well. I hope his wife's well. I know the man's in pain. He's got back problems and things. And he's he's probably ailing from that. I don't know. i got to check on him, find out what's going on. But anyway, anybody wants to know how to build this thing, you know, this is a Ravel kit. This is in scale 1426 scale. Very small. A lot more smaller than 1350 probably by, oh, I don't know, probably about five, four or five inches. And it's pretty good size. It's bigger than, than one seven hundred scale and bigger than one six hundred scale. It's big. It's a good size model. It's about seventeen and a quarter inches long. It's a full hull. And this is believe me, this old turd right here can be polished to perfection. All it takes is skills and, and take your time. I was gonna paint this nineteen thirty six all nice haze gray. I said, what the hell, I'm gonna make a Pearl Harbor nineteen forty one. And uh, so I got right here, lucky me. I bought this kit 
came out 25 years ago. In the holiday shop, where the kit was at, I got these Lauren Perry gold medal photo etch set that's made custom made for this here kit. It's got everything on here. It's got a choice of uh, 1936 or 1941. So I got 1941. But anyway, he's got this kit decides to put photo mesh fittings on it. First thing you got to do, it's, it's going to be mind-boggling. It's going to take, it's going to be laborious. And you got to be very, very careful, especially using tools like this. This here, like a good day to a bad day, if you ain't careful. So please be careful and exercise. Caution, caution, caution. Always cut away from you, not towards you, away from you. And I have my files, and I cut up all these railings on here. They're all gone. This thing is flush. It's ready to be primed and be painted. I already painted the hull on bottom red oxide, same thing I did on the mark graph. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark my boot top thing on here and tape it off. And go ahead and retape again. Go ahead and paint this sea blue. I'm going to paint the deck Norfolk blue. Navigation bridge will be painted red oxide, same color the hull is. But this is an old kit, guys. This thing's been around for a long time and it's pretty accurate. I checked it. I looked at it. For references, this thing is pretty much on. Uh, it's an old kit. It's old. You just got to work with it. It goes together very simple. It's not that bad. And believe me, as old as this thing is, it wasn't that much flash on this thing. Well, I took cut the screws out, put all the parts in there. What I got. But look at this thing. There's hardly any, any flash on on those fire control stations. I got to cut those windows out in the fire control stations because they got fire control stations fittings that go on here that'll fit in front of the give it more three D. Here's that big old tall. Uh, this main mess goes up aft on the on the fire control station. That was removed during the 1940 uh, configuration. I'm going to gloss this deck after I get the sea blue all done on here. After I paint all the, uh, pick out all the details with the uh, sea blue. This is an accurate color from 1941. The USS Arizona was the only battleship at Pearl Harbor that was painted 5S, dark sea blue. The others were painted 5D, dark gray, a little darker than this gray right here. Reason why Arizona was painted this color first is because she collided with the USS Nevada. It did a little damage, so they fixed the damage, they repaired the ship, and it's a one. We'll go ahead and paint this thing. Okay. Operation Rainbow Five. Color code. Battle line all painted 5S. Look at the rest on dry dock. We'll start painting these, but I never came to realizations because Pearl Harbor came. At the Pearl Harbor, they went ahead and used this color. But the Navy found out that these blues are really fading out a lot. And you can see it almost as if they were like a, you can see the haze gray coming through there. So it's between salt water, air, and oxygen, H2O, and, uh, and the immersion of seawater, it, it'll make these colors change. Same thing with plastic. You get yellow plastic, will turn to orange because of sunlight. It's called sun bleach. Okay, that's about as far as I got in Arizona. I, I got all the all the uh, sub assemblies all done. I had to do a lot of preparation on here to get those railings up there, so they're all gone now. Uh, even the fire control station railings, I got them all all cleaned off. So I'm pretty good job. This thing's ready to be pamped, primed, and painted. So I'll probably be working on the side of that dry. I'm gonna gloss down that deck. One thing, and I'll put some polyurethane on there. <clears throat> I'm just dry some glossy. And let it sit 24 hours and get and stain the decks and start painting. That's as far as I got on these things. This is real nice, guys. It's pretty accurate. Once you put those photo etch fittings on there, it really enhances the fidelity to it. It looks good now when I took off all the uh, all the railings of the kit gives you. Gary Brinker, we did his. He he put sheet plastic in there and stuff. He tried to incorporate a kick a kick rail. 
because the railing's on ships, you notice know, there's a little little flange that comes up and the railing goes up. That's called a kick rail. So these railings that come with this kit, Lauren Perry's got kick rails already incorporated those railings, so I don't have to worry about that. So I got two battleships going back to back, guys, and I may have something else I'll bring out of the closet I've got to finish up on. But I am finishing up my table. I pulled this, the Arizona. It was in storage. I look at things. What the hell? I get tired of looking at that damn thing. If I keep on in there like that, so I'll start losing parts. And I have to go out and buy another one, which I am not too enthused is buy another one. And uh, so I made a parts inspection, on a parts inventory on the kit. It's 100%. Nothing missing. And I got this piece of timber right here down there at the, uh, I paid six. Five ninety nine, six dollars for this piece of wood right here. So I'm gonna stain this real good. This will probably be for the mark wrap. I'm gonna get another one for the Arizona. Okay, fellas, that's as far as I got today. What's going on? So you probably wondering what Frank's shaking up right now. Well, Frankie's working on battleships, side by side. So I'll be working on those two right now. I'm gonna prepare dinner and get, and get this thing uploaded. And. Uh, Take a breather for a while and start turning to on the paint job on the Arizona and, and uh, let it dry and uh, work on the Mark Craft next and just back and forth, back and forth to get done. I'd say about these things about a good two week deal to be done in a couple weeks. I don't have no photo etch fittings for the uh, Mark Craft. I'll make a set or a, a, a purchasing a set of that. Probably the top model of where it's got one right in some. There's a lot of stuff out there, fellas. Huh? These hobby shots are, they don't have nothing anymore. I mean, I go in there, the paint racks, all, even Schultz's hobbies. These have a great difficulty getting paint. I don't know what's up with that stuff. But they say we got no problem getting Tamiya. But the Humbrol and Model, Model Masters fudged out, it's gone. And Schultz Hobby told me they're not out of business either. I said, well, that's I heard you're not out of business. I said, well, this is what they're doing. They're changing, they're, they're, they're changing everything. I said, I guess Rustolian bought them out of somebody. Krylon bought them out of someone. I don't know. But they're going to bring them back. It'll probably, probably be the same kind of paint. They got new paint called Mission Paint. That'd be coming this way. But all, all the paint that's available uh, at a hobby shop is, is this Vallejo variety. And uh, this stuff here is golden yellow, chrome yellow. I use in my F4B bike. Okay, guys, that's about all I got going on for the night. Just let you know what Frankie Day is shaking. So you got two battleships coming your way. So stay posted for those. So probably tomorrow I'll be working on that uh, hell diver. Get that thing painted. Get that thing finished. And uh, get that C-54 Skymaster going, too. That's for my Berlin Airlift group build. And so far, I got that. I got that. Get that thing finished. And, and it's time to build some balsa oil. I already got my layered solution over there. It's got to build the, the top wing and, and sand and dope it down and start putting the tissue to it and put it together. Because I got a nice flying field about four miles down my road down here. It's about, i say about 150 acres of grass about this high. I'm going to have fun out there. So I'll probably take some videos of my most planes flying around. Okay, so I've got a lot of that going for me. Oh yeah, I just got back from the pond today and yesterday. Yesterday is my day off. I took one of my tugboats out to my new pond up here. they got a pond up here. It's probably walking distance. I can get there probably about 10 minutes from here if I can walk from here from this trailer. It's a beautiful looking pond. It's all fresh water. It's all fresh water pond. <laughs> I just got back from the pond about two and a half hours ago. <clears throat> I got off work, went down there and put my tug in the water. And I had it out there. The thing I seen was orange object growing underneath the water. I go, what the hell is that? I kept a looking, kept a looking. And it's a goddamn carp. That's a sewer bass. And I go, I'll be damned. I kept looking at my tug. My tug was heading the ways. I hope that damn thing don't sink my tug. So I had my Atlantic 2 tug up there. 
a fiberglass job that I bought the hobby shop. And uh, so I'm going to probably be making a video of that at the new pond. It's called Sail Day at the New Pond. You know, it's a funny thing how life is, you know. When one door closes, another door opens. And this door is open for me. I have all the opportunities on my interests is right out here. I can fly my planes out over here. And I got a beautiful pond out over there. And I can take my boats out there for a sail. And I'm going to build me a big workbench right over here next to my storage shed next door. And I'm going to build a workshop right there. And I'm going to work on my uh, Dumas Jersey City tug. And I got a Dumas PT109 over there, just around the corner. And I got that going. So I got a lot of stuff shaking. Okay, it's time for me to shake out of here. I'll get something to prepare. Looks like it's getting dark outside. I don't know if it's going to rain or what. I heard they got a storm coming in. Northeast supposed to get a lot of snow up there by Michigan and uh, New York. All those states out there will probably get bombarded with a lot of snow. It's going to, like I say, it's, not, it's April, you know. I see it snow plenty of times in April. And next week going to be a beautiful week. Back to that. So let snow, let snow get cold or what? It's supposed to. It's April. Okay. I'm out of here. Make mama happy. Take care of the little ones. Stay focused when you drive. And wear a mask when you're out there in public. Don't take no chances out there. And please be careful. Be Please, please be aware of your surroundings. And take care of your family. Take care of yourselves. Get yourself a kit. Build some models. And I'll probably have live action tonight with me working on my HK Models 148 scale D17. I got to finish up on. All I got to do it is put the transparencies on there, and she's finished. Matter of fact, that was uh, Mr. Al Woods, national uh, national uh, UK uh, UK modeler. He had that national pride group going on. I guess everybody's got theirs done except old Frankie Day. And I'll have that done tonight. So look look forward to that live action got going on tonight, guys. So. We'll catch you on that tonight. So, guys, uh, I posted for that. I'll probably get some pictures of this probably posted pretty soon. And, oh, yeah, I'm going to get the Ark Royal. We're going to get pictures of that posted on face uh, Facebook pages. Ear Fix Modeling page. That'd be great. So, look forward for the uh, pictures of the uh, Ark Royal that it's going to ship on. Okay, this is Frankie Day selling up for Frankie Day Models. God bless you guys. Love you, fellas. Thank you very much for your candor. Thank you very much for your wonderful views and comments. I'm honored to each one of you. And God bless you all. And we'll catch you live action night with Frankie Day. So stay posted for that. Something to look forward to. Okay, boys. See you later, guys.